The ancient land of India is as diverse as its people, home to the Indus Valley Civilization, the birthplace of Hinduism and Buddhism, a land of mountains, deserts, and everything in between. Let us explore the colorful history of India and get to know its people. The history of India spans millennia, and with that, we will only be covering some of the most important periods. If you want to know more about the other periods that won't be mentioned in the video, please let us know in the comments below. The history of India began with the rise of the Indus River Valley Civilization in 3300 to 1300 BC, one of the most advanced civilizations during its time. Known for its architecture, urban planning, and social organization, this civilization was also known as the Harappan Civilization. It existed from present-day Afghanistan to Pakistan and to northwestern India. Agriculture, metalworking, clay pottery, and jewelry making were introduced during this period. However, due to climate change and external migration, the Harappan Civilization would ultimately meet its end. The arrival of Indo-Aryans from the region of Iran in 1500 BC marked the beginning of the Vedic period, which would end in the year 500 BC. The period was called as such as the Vedas, one of the most sacred and the oldest texts of Hinduism were being written. This period, therefore, gave birth to the Hindu religion. This period also gave rise to the caste system. The Vedic period, also precipitated the beginning of the so-called historical period of India from 500 to 150 BCE, coinciding with the mention of 16 Mahajanapadas or city-states. Alexander the Great's Indian campaign was also part of this era, but due to various reasons the Macedonians decided not to further their conquest. During this historical period, there was a king who managed to unite the realm under one pan-Indian empire, Chandragupta Maurya. His accession began the Mauryan dynasty, which would span a few hundred years beginning in 322 BC and ending in 184 BC. The era also ushered in the spread of Buddhism amongst the general populace. This was primarily promoted by Ashoka the Great, the third emperor of the Mauryan dynasty. The period between the Mauryan dynasty and the next significant dynasty saw India being ruled by the Shunga, Satavahana, and Kushan empires. This period in Indian history is called the Early Classical Period, which would last from 200 BC to 320 AD. The next great dynasty to rule India ruled at a time called the Golden Era, due to the flourishing of Indian culture and the expansion of trade throughout the continent. This dynasty was called the Great Gupta Dynasty, which began in 240 to 280 CE and collapsed in 550 AD. There were numerous achievements in mathematics and the sciences during this period. The dynasty was thought to be started by one Sri Gupta, who was a Vaishya, or merchant class. This golden age also brought about the establishment of the foundations of the early government of the Indian subcontinent. The period was also marked by defiance towards Hindu thought at that time. As a matter of fact, it was Buddhism that was greatly promoted during this period in time. The decline of the Gupta Empire allowed another to take its place. After the dynasty collapsed, northern India was ruled by Harshavardhan for 42 years. A devoted Buddhist, he was known as a skilled leader, but his death brought about the decline of northern India in 647 AD. A rising religion in the West would try to stake its claim on the Indian subcontinent in the 8th century, which would change Indian history significantly so that a pan-Indian identity would not be seen again until centuries later. In 712 CE, Muhammad bin Qasim was able to conquer North India, marking a decline in a pan-Indian identity relegating cities into separate city-states, which would be the basis of rule for years to come. Numerous Islamic sultanates would try to conquer the Indian subcontinent for centuries, until one, the Delhi Sultanate, managed to take hold of the disparate city-states dotting the declining nation. 
The Sultanate was able to rule large parts of the nation and ruled the subcontinent for 320 years, from 1206 to 1526. It would be followed by one of the most famous dynasties of India. The Mughal Empire finds its beginnings with its defeat of the already declining Delhi Sultanate. This period in time was known for its cultural advancements, particularly in architecture. Architectural marvels were built during this period, such as the Taj Mahal and the Jama Masjid, under the rule of Shah Jahan. This period was known for administrative changes, the placation and equalization of local populations via administration, and the expansion of agriculture, as well as agricultural taxation. The Mughal Empire would eventually last until 1797. It was followed by the Maratha Empire and Sikh Empire. However, coinciding with the rise and fall of the Mughals was the entry of European explorers and traders, which would usher in a new colonial era for the subcontinent. The English famously ruled over India via the East India Company. The company had its humble beginnings in the 1600s on the west coast of India for trade. They established a foothold by building factories within the subcontinent. Alarmed by the expansion of the company, the Mughals went to battle against them twice and lost both times. This helped consolidate the power of the company over the subcontinent and further expanded the rule of England over that of India. After defeating the Marathas in 1818, there were no more indigenous powers to challenge the company's hegemony over the subcontinent. That is, until 1857, when soldiers employed by the company rebelled against it. It was suppressed in 1858, but all power was transferred from the company to the British crown thereafter. The colonial government expanded its rule by renaming itself as the British Raj after the 1857 Indian Rebellion, ruled by the Crown itself. This is where the contemporary formal naming of India originated from. It was also a founding member of the League of Nations. Being directly under the control of the British Crown, India's people swore servitude to it. Thus, when the two world wars broke out, Indian soldiers were dispatched all over the world in support of its British overlords. That is, until 1947, when the Raj was partitioned between the Union of India and Pakistan, both gaining independence in the process. After partition, India and Pakistan were never able to reconcile their vast differences, mostly in part due to religious affiliations and traditions. The two countries would become rivals even until this day, yet still hold joint traditions with each other such as the Atari Waga border ceremony to commemorate their commitment to helping each other despite being rivals. According to the International Monetary Fund, the GDP of India is valued at around $3 trillion, making it the world's sixth largest economy. The largest sector of the Indian economy is the service sector, which makes up 61% of the entirety of the economy. Agricultural products include sugarcane, rice, milk, wheat, bison milk, potatoes, vegetables, bananas, maize, and onions. India is also home to heavy industries such as textiles, chemicals, food processing, steel, transportation equipment, cement, mining, petroleum, machinery, software and pharmaceuticals. The flag of India consists of three stripes. The top one is India saffron, the middle is white, and the bottom one is India green. The Ashoka Chakra, a 24-spoked wheel, is smack dab in the center of the flag. The saffron color indicates strength and courage. The white symbolizes peace and truth with Dharma Chakra. The green shows the fertility and growth of the land. The middle chakra intention is to show that there is life in movement and death in stagnation. India as a whole is one of the largest countries on Earth, thus the title of subcontinent. It has a total land mass of around 3 million square kilometers or 1 million square miles. The capital of this gigantic country is New Delhi. Straddling its borders are Bangladesh, Bhutan, 
Burma, China, Nepal, and Pakistan. The highest point in India is Mount K2, the second tallest mountain in the world, which stands at around 8,000 meters or 28,000 feet. The lowest point is found in Kutanad, which is 2 meters or 7 feet below sea level. Topographically, India is varied, from high mountains to rich valleys and flatlands. India is a hot, tropical country, except in the northern areas which are cooler most of the year. The maximum average temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and the minimum average temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. India has the highest population in the entire world, with around 1.4 billion inhabitants in total. And being the country with the most people, the diversity can be overwhelming. But a large part of India's population are Indo-Aryan at 72%, 25% are Dravidians, and 3% are others. India has hundreds, if not thousands, of languages, but the most widely spoken is Hindi, with 44% of the population speaking it. 80% of Indians practice Hinduism, while 14% are Muslims. There is also a small Christian presence at around 2%. Sikhs also exist in this society, but they only make up 1% of the entire population. Here are some famous dishes from India that are mouth-watering to look at and satisfying to taste. Let's start with Vindaloo, one of the spiciest curries around. If you're up for the challenge, why not try this one? Another great dish you can try is Palak Paneer, made from spinach and pressed cheese. You'll be eating veggies in no time after this. How about the famous biryani recipes from the different regions? Stock up on this rice-based dish and you'll get bigger in no time. And who could ever forget tandoori chicken, cooked in a tandoor clay oven, marinated in spice and yogurt? Let's also talk about some famous people from India. From politicians to social leaders to movie stars, India has it all. Let's begin with Mahatma Gandhi, a prominent civil rights activist who opposed colonial rule. Arguably, one of the most known Indian actors, Amitabh Bachchan. Siddhartha Gautama, religious teacher and founder of Buddhism, also belongs on this list. And finally, we have Shah Jahan, the famous Mughal emperor who commissioned the construction of the Taj Mahal for his favorite consort. If you like this video on India, you'll love this next one.